Bowl win. Where history is made and legends live on. Down by six now, three seconds left. Third and ten at the SMU 41-yard line. McMahon throwing for the end zone. Who has the ball? He is the Warriors' all-time leading passer. And for Tulane, for Weldy Moore. He's multifaceted. Don't be fooled by his position. This running back catches the football also. And with that, we welcome you to the inaugural Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. And this is Aloha Stadium in Honolulu. It's the Warriors of Hawaii against the Green Wave of Tulane. Kalikimaka, everyone. Merry Christmas from Honolulu, and don't be fooled by the location. Officially, Tulane is the home team. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Lee. The great matchup, number one against number one. Timmy Chang, the top passing offense in the country against Tulane. They forced more turnovers than anyone else in the nation. And Rod Gilmore, Merry Christmas to you, first of all. Merry Christmas, partner. If Chang has a problem, it is an interception. Well, that's true. And he has had some trouble in the past, but he was banged up, had a bad hand. He's healthy now, and when he's healthy, he's something special. Look at his career numbers. 55% completion percentage, over 8,000 yards. The thing I like about him is that when he throws it, he puts it on time so the receiver can do something with the ball after the catch. It's a Hawaii offense that isn't on the field all that long, and they're so explosive. Let's go down to the field. Here's Alex Flanagan. Down. 
down and more. Gain of 20 on the play. But the thing that Lawson does so well because he's so athletic is throw on the move. And you know, they were concerned about him being hyped for the game. So what do you do? You channel that energy. Let him get out and run because you know he's high strong anyway. Let him run, get it out of his system, and he makes the perfect throw. Tough to imagine a better start to this one by Ford G. Lane. The onslaught just really opens the clock. And they march down the field. First down at 10, already a lead. Warriors 29, less than a minute in. I'm going to say A yard on the play. Chris Selford says the place he feels he's most overmatched. He's the head coach of Tulane. Is his own offensive line. Got a couple of freshmen on the left side. McGee and Trainer. The mismatch there against a very, very feisty Hawaii defensive line. Travis LaVoy has nearly three times as many quarterback throws as anybody else on the team. Second down and seven is up there. And the linebackers for Hawaii, Pisa, Tino, Samoa. Jones told us he might be the quickest football player he's ever been around. He does everything on that defense. And this is a Hawaii secondary that is without Hiram Peters. No relation to Leonard. Hiram Peters is back behind. Travis LeBoy is a guy who normally is going to be in in passing situations. He's got great speed, great quickness. He's only about 240 pounds, but he comes in quickly. You see that? He gets past the tackle, inside move, and puts the pressure on Lawson. And when you've got quickness, if you can use it to the inside, you've got a chance to really make that offensive tackle struggle. He got up on Lawson in a hurry. Still waiting to sort out the penalty. We get the word. trying to figure out if they want to decline it or accept it. They decline it. Then there's going to be a fourth down and a possible field goal attempt. If they take it, they've got a chance to push them back, but they'll give them a third down opportunity. Pass interference on the offense. Kelly's accepted. 15 yards. Run the previous five. Receive the down. Third down. Officials working this snag of the Goliath ball up to the top 10. So, you know, Chris Selfo said he wanted to be the aggressor in this ball game. So with this third down, I think you're going to see him think in terms of two plays. Get himself back in a position. If he has to go with it on fourth down, he will. They did not take the penalty and force him to the field goal. They're giving him another chance here. Brings up a third down and 17. Yes, they do have a running back, Thurl Mitchell, 
but he's an excellent blocker, stays in an awful lot, he pass protect, and he gets his four fine wide receivers. First down, two. That's not to say Mitchell won't get a go. He had a hundred yard game last year. He wants to get a couple carries. First down and ten. And the offensive line for Hawaii. Bit of a change. We were told Wayne Hunter, the starting left tackle, has been suspended. Violation of team rules. Uriah Maria. Moanoa will get the start. And the defensive line for Tulane. Roxy Sheldon does it all. Up the line. Back to school too late. They normally play the standard four or three, but with five wide receivers, four, four wide receivers for Hawaii, they'll go with two linebackers, and they can as a freshman. And the defensive back for Tulane, Sean Lucas moves into the starting lineup again, only a nickel guy, but they will be with all the defensive backs. First down and 10. Blackman was there, along with Marlon Tickle. So that's a little bit unusual, but it is a phenomenon that's happened lately. That pressure on Timmy Chang. Seven sacks in the last two games coming into this one. He gets sacked now. They didn't have that problem earlier in the year. Well, what's the issue? Offensive line. You know, they had some changes. They moved some people around. Had some injuries. Been an issue for Vince Manawai is a real stun on the offensive line. The starting right guard. down immediately by Linares L. Page, one of the real standouts for the lane, lost of two on the play. So that was a great play. I mean, it's the pressure that forces this to happen. And then there's great man-to-man -man coverage. When your guy stops and you're the corner, you go get him. And that's just what L. Page did. You see the numbers on L. Page. Might not want to go here, but eight interceptions. We told you, Tulane has forced more turnovers than anybody. Outside to block them out, and then it's great running ability inside. With that double screen, your interior lineman can get out right away and start blocking the linebacker. And if you've got a guy who can run out the catch, like over, you can make that. And it looks like Tulane will spend a timeout with 10:45 to go in the first quarter. Hey Tim, we thank you for putting this ball together. Had a chance to sit next to Tim yesterday at the Canada Blue Hawaii Bowl luncheon. So well, he felt the man-to-man -man coverage and the pressure coming from the right side right away. And as soon as he saw the pressure coming, look at it. It's Michael Roberts, 95 right side. He just dumps it off quickly to John West. That's pretty good quarterback. We expect that out of Tim Chang. For Timmy. Might throw a whip on this round. This first down and goal from the one. Go! 
does more than just block. He bowls his way into the end zone. And this is going to be his 11th TD. Watch him at the point of attack. He gets met right in the hole. Big hit right there by Brandon Quick. But he just nails it. I mean, Brent Quick came up as hard as you can come up, but he just gets met. That scoring drive is two minutes and five seconds, which is pretty typical for Hawaii, and then which goes to offer. Justin Ayak is on for the extra point. And no problem. Ayak able to put it through. 10.45 to go. Here in the first quarter, Hawaii on the board. At this point, Diamond Head has not been distracted. Seven of them. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. Brought to you by Conagra Foods. We set America's table at home and away. And by Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. The North Shore of Oahu, that's a rod on the left, I'm on the right. See how we've been spending our last couple days here. I wasn't too good though. Yeah, I'm just picking it up myself. Now, we'll say he was down. Tino E. Samoa made the stop. Chris Coleman, the fullback, his coaching staff told us his Christmas present would be a handoff. <laughs> Fullback doesn't get it too often. And if he got six yards or more, he'd get it again. I heard the whistle. Clearly, the whistle. Clearly the whistle blew. Whistle before the ball came out. It was already wrapped up. But you like that throw ball every once in a while to the fullback. That was the, uh, the, the Christmas gift of the two-way coaching staff to Chris Coleman. Kelvin Millhouse was there with him, but Narcisse has first down yard. As you go back to the, to the surfing, uh, the coaching staff for Hawaii, they, they talked about the Rich Piano said, hey, you know, all guys have 20 guys out there on surfboards. So they got 10 guys on the boogie board, which is a real sign. He felt pretty comfortable with his team. Yeah, yeah that's, that's sort of his guy. How about Lobby? So, J.P. Lobby gets out in the water. That's right, you know. And what, a sea urchin attack him? <laughs> <laughs> Bonafar made the stop there for Hawaii. Now, Hawaii Moore may not have been around a lot of beaches, but he's been around the football and off a lot. I mean, this guy is as good as it gets when you talk about an all-around back. Over 1,000 yards rushing, 47 yards rushing, 16 catches, 412 yards rushing. He's a guy, the NFL guy, the guy they go, man, you know, he's a good guy. He's going to be right in here and he's going to come right up. You're going to see the block that is not there. And there's the block. This is block. Target getting in there. Big hit. Donald Madlack, the freshman. Guard is trying to hide. He was able to Official who was part of the playing field this time hitting the hit, hit with the football. Well, he's got to show better hands than that, <laughs> or better feet. Get better feet, get out of the way. And keep your eye on the official right in the middle. Keep your eye there. Watch it. Up, oh, right there. Gets him right in the back. And again, when you bend down a little bit more, yeah. Smith catches that ball. See, I credit the official. I've already made a good effort, Rod, to get out of the way. Didn't make an effort. <laughs> Back. 
seconds left to play in the first quarter. Five yard punt. On Christmas in Hawaii. And it's seven up in the world. Among these festivities, both teams have enjoyed since Saturday. They had a sunset dinner at Pearl Harbor on the deck of the USS Missouri. Of course, it was on board there on September of 1945 that Japan formally surrendered. The ceremony held on board. Battleship anchored in Tokyo Bay. Let me one thing. I don't think guys in any other boat were having any more fun than you guys had at this time. They did a whole lot of things. And this is the Lou out there. Oh, I don't What do you want to go with? You want to go Tim, Timmy, Timothy? We kind of asked him about it. He said, you know, whatever. And then his mom. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet he goes with whatever mom says. Right. If mom says it's Tim, then it's Tim. He says Timmy, then it's Tim. He's been in trouble today. Three times he's been sacked. That is uh, simply amazing. 19 on the season. Most of those times, just the last few games. <laughs> But you know, Timmy Chang eventually will want to get a big play by Jeremiah Cocker, and he can't get it here. I mean, look at this man's coverage. This is pretty good. He was chasing him. He made him work real hard to get beat. By the time he got a yard on him, the ball was already thrown. That's pretty good coverage. Well, hey. Yeah, okay. No one in the, the NCAA currently has done this. <laughs> you know what? He said he wants to do something special today, a special Christmas present. His son, he has a three-month-old son. He's going to marry Christmas, and he wants to do something special for him today. I want to do this for the best one. I'm going to do this for the best one. I'm going to do this for the best one. I'm going to do this for the best one. And when he was able to bring it down, he was. Colbert goes 5'8", and that's interesting about Hawaii. They don't, run, they don't have your prototypical 6'4 wide receiver. Their tallest receiver is 6'4", and they actually average a little less than that. Yeah, here's Colbert, 5'8", out yeah, from yeah, California. Second and Fred is good in the back. He's got great feet, about 4'4 four, four speed. He's a great high school player. I mean, everybody's seen the one in Washington State, Oregon, Colorado. That will end quarter number one. The inaugural Kanaka Foods Hawaii Bowl here in Honolulu. And for quarter number two, Hawaii. Kaylee Kaliki Maka, did I get that right, Rod? I don't know. I just say Merry Christmas. <laughs> I can't say that. Along with Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan, and our outstanding ESPN college football crew, Steve Lee, wishing you a Merry Christmas. Are you working hard or hardly working? Yeah, I'm hardly working. Of course, that's true. Yeah. Fights are good. Good plan. Not a real one either. I thought I had a water rod. Yeah, Alex had a Christmas tree. I don't know what to tell you. I should have known. We open up quarter number two. John West is taken down from behind by Floyd Dorsey. Speaking of Alex, he's back to the beach. Alex. Tried to uh, keep them off their feet as much as possible. El Page is back. And Matt McBride will look at him. This is Matt McBride. back to the
Friday, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN with three games. Today begins with College Game Day, the Bowl Special, presented by Outback. That's at noon Eastern. And then at 1 Eastern, Southern Miss will meet Oklahoma State in the Houston Bowl. 4.30 East, Eli Manning makes his final appearance in an old Miss uniform as Nebraska and the Rebels crash in the mainstay Independence Bowl. Then the nightcap, the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Sixth ranked Kansas City against Arizona State, normally a high scoring affair. That was a 59 yard punt. First down and 10. Yeah. This is pretty much a two-lane game right now. They are hanging in there, controlling the game, shortening the game. And it really comes down to, you get plays out of J.P. Lawson. And J.P. is the kind of guy who likes that pressure, too. He was as good a high school quarterback as you will find. Over 3,500 yards passing as a senior, 49 touchdown passes. Initially went to UCLA and then left there, transferred to Tulane, and everybody thought he was just going to be the man. He wants to be the man. He wants to be in the spotlight while he's still going to be the spirit. Look at the back of the Wilder Moore. It looked like they were going to play action. The Lawson has just gave it to Moore. Lahadui Correa came across the backfield for Lawson for Moore. Talked about Lawson wanting to be the man and showcase his skills. Uh, what quarterback didn't want to play this Hawaii out there? Exactly, but right now, this two-way offense has no trouble keeping Correa out of the back. And he's all over more. More had no chance. But you're right. This Could have been a late hit or a face mask. But Moel D. Moore, boy, did he have a little bit of get up and go once he got the ball. He's got quick acceleration. It's a 15 yard gain. We'll see if in fact it's wiped out or they'll tack on more to it. Well, I, I think they're first looking at the wide. After the play, the dead ball foul, personal foul against the offense. The 15 yards from the end of the well, it's going to be Kaczynski right there coming in at the end, cleaning up the pile. And linemen like to do that. And what has happened lately over the years is the officials are going to protect defenseless guys. When I was playing, hey, these linemen would come down and if you didn't have your head on a swivel, they would just get you. Nothing was going to the linemen love to do that. They come down the field, they look around the tackle, and he's standing around. And then they just try and see off on it. And if you see the guy, you look at him like he's sick, so they won't call it. He's sick, so he's sick. And they get the first down, and they put the back to the first down. Joseph does have skills. I mean, he has 
great speed, quickness, and he has a way of giving a little bit of a lift to the offense. He does some different things. He can throw it, but he is a much more effective runner than he is a passer at this stage. You need the guy who can, can run some options for you. He can drop back and take it and take off on you. We were told, how many backup quarterbacks in the country are the fastest player on their team? Derek Joseph is just that. That's that uh, Michael Vick influence. And anytime Michael Vick's on the field, he's the best athlete, the fastest he's got. Yep. Now, this would really hurt Tulane because Lawsman is a guy who I really think he has a chance to be a pretty special quarterback. He's about 6'3", got great skills, and I think that next year, he could be kind of a Carson Palmer type player. You know, a guy who has a tough two or three years and then his senior year just explodes. What's the husband? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but he has taken his shots today. Look at him here. J.P. Lawson, he's got good speed, he's a good athlete, but there's not much you can do when guys are on top of you in a hurry. He gets rid of this ball, but goes down. We'll take another one from the left side. And you see the pressure keeps coming from the blind side. On the left shoulder, he gets hit. That last time, he had no chance to see it. He's a tough guy. If there's any way he can get back in there, he will, because he's got a whole lot of family watching. He's a uh, coach for Shell Pro Colors. He's a fierce competitor that cannot be Get the word out, lost him back down to Alex. Hey, Steve, it looks pretty scary as he was walking off the field. You guys may have seen he took a knee and kind of stopped for a minute, but the trainer has just informed me he bruised his back, and they do expect him back in the game, Steve. Yeah, there he is. He's <laughs> on his way back, Alex. Thank you. He's an excellent runner. The coach has said, well, he's got to be too long. 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 He's got They will play as many as four freshmen up front. The adjustment is clearly going to have to be keeping more guys in, getting them away from the three and four wide receiver sets if they have any chance of getting the ball down the field. What we're going with the stack is across the line of scrimmage. The goal is a game of one. Chad Owens is back to the 40 spot. to go here in the second quarter at the seven nothing game as you look at Waikiki on this happy holiday Chris Selfo and Tulane coming off the bus today now normally the green wave would head right to their locker room but not today they went right to the middle of the field we're gonna play in this field right now this is our home field we're the home team when you're the home team man you're supposed to perform that way that's what we expect today. This is our place. We're wearing green. I expect us to perform the way we're capable of performing. What do you think, Rod? Shake it up? Try something different? I, I think it works. I think the one problem, though, is that when you're the home team, shouldn't you get to choose the jerseys or choose the sideline or something? The odds are stacked clearly against today. They're in a dark jersey. They're on the sideline in the sun. Yeah, they're in the visiting locker. The only way they're the home team is if they're listed on the bottom. Of the in Hawaii on top. Chad Rocky, play action. Coming off with Chad Hayes. Oh, yeah. Fourth and quick game. You think about yeah, some of the distractions that Tulane has been faced with coming here to the ball game in Hawaii. 
Coach Selfo told us, no, the exact opposite would be, let's invite Hawaii down to the world around Mardi Gras time, have them out there for a couple nights, and play in the Superdome. Oh, he was really worried about it because all of his players were on their feet, having a good time on the beach and doing all those types of things, and you have to wonder about, gee, where is the focus and will they lose their legs before they get a chance to actually play the game? It's a, a good sign, however, was when he finally put the curfew to curfew off. Chad Owens catches those things, and he knows when those things are around him, he will get it, and that's probably drop number 71 on the season for Hawaii. And June Jones told us that this is a 60% quarterback, and he's always on the money. Well. His percentage is about 55 because of those 70 drops coming into the game. We mentioned interceptions have been an issue. Chang has 25 touchdowns, 22 interceptions on um, the season, but two games, nine interceptions. Yeah, you know, Jeff Sanchez is probably kicking himself just a little bit. And Sanchez is the right corner out there, and he gave him just a little bit too much room. On a third down like that, he has to know exactly where the, the, the area is. There he is right there. Sanchez in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Look how far off he is. By eight yards off. And then he's getting a lot of ground well beyond the first down marker. Now, in fairness to Sanchez, he's a guy who just started playing corner last year. He was a running back, so he's still learning in the spot, learning where he is on the field. The coaching staff threatened Sanchez to take away some of his playing time. He was just seeing his practice. This can't take long for the safety of the team. He's got to put down the artist, Tim Chang. Did you hear the crowd? Hey, the crowd started yelling. Why did the crowd get excited? Because they wanted Jimmy Chang to do this all season long. He likes to stay in the pocket. We're used to seeing a quarterback who will get out and go. Chang doesn't like to do it. He has a bit of a bad knee, and he won't run, but this time he took off the crowd response. There has been a uh, few in this area who have questioned Chang's toughness. The coaching staff knows he's come a long way in regards to that this season. probably going to nail him for grounding. You know, you got to, if you throw it away, you got to be outside the tackle right. and the ball's got to go beyond the line of scrimmage. No one is in the neighborhood. No, I don't think so. Are they going to wave it off? Pick it up, put it away. Oh, no, hey. Hey. Well, he was out of pocket. That was clear. Does the ball get beyond the line of scrimmage? That's pretty close, but I guess it barely made it. Second down and ten upcoming. Nine twenty-four to go. Second quarter. Tulane is very much in this game, Rob. This is their game right now. I mean, the pace of it is Tulane's pace. Couldn't get the proper angle on it. Hey, see you guys talk about Jimmy Chang's toughness and how the fans wanted to see him be tougher. Well, coaches say his teammates also wanted to see him be tougher. And they told us that he achieved that in November during the Cincinnati game. You guys might remember he bruised his knee during that game, had to be carried off the field by his teammates, and then came back later in the game to win it for his team. And coaches told us yesterday that that did amazing things for his toughness, Steve. And Rod, being on the field like that, you know, you can have great numbers, but you come back from injury, crunch time, you can see down the field. That, that's where it's more. That's Yeah. 
success from John Lucas. And Lucas thought the play was over. He had him out there. Lucas was in great position. Look at him. He's got great coverage on him. He looks back. Now he thinks the play will be over. Watch him ease up. He eases up right now. Kamene keeps looking back for the ball. Gale, 25 on the play. John Lucas is the nickelback who's playing in the strong safety the, the strong linebacker spot, so he is the fifth back on the field. Lucas, the true freshman, who scored three touchdowns this season. Here's Chang out of the club. That came from the official way back, though, Rod. Well, the thing is, he didn't look around. He didn't get the head around. He had great position, great coverage. He gets the left arm up and gets it out. But he was holding him with the right arm. Holding him with the right arm and then knocked it away with the left hand. I, I thought it was a pretty good play, but they probably had him for having a hand on it. Pass the defense. Pass the front. Last turn the 16-yard line by rule. Then appears to turn the end zone, the ball is placed on the two-yard line. Well, but it was passing here. This is a pretty good play. You know, you don't want to give up the touchdown, but the right hand. You see the right hand is on there, and he never gets the head around. If he doesn't have the right hand on him, he probably gets away with the ball. Pick up a first down and goal, or spot it at the two. You know, you got to do that. You don't want to grab the shoulder. They're looking at him. Sean Willie Allen will check in. They're checking. They're going to go on. That's normal. They do that in the red zone every time. Willie Allen is checking. They're checking the snap. Off the rock to the left. And it's a touchdown. Christmas present this morning. Now the two-year contract extension. Rod will take it to 2007. And that makes a lot of sense. He's, he's a player's coach. They get a lot of discipline out of him. The players respect him. And I think that's a smart decision. Only 39. He could be there a long time. But, uh, things look better before the football game started. And now he finds himself a full season up in the hole. Justin Ayat is set to kick it away. surprised that something like that is so important to play with that self was over two years ago he said hey win a big game here what can i do for you and the players wanted to go out of the way of hearing and that, that, hey. that, that, that was the most important thing the coach is waiting for it. let us win hearing well, but, but now you see part of the problem with some of the ncaa rules against celebrating i mean there's this cry to be individuals a little bit right and he understands that and he doles it out carefully while disciplining the team go to the hearing okay the back of the jersey. Eight and a half up in the first half. 
really maybe a pivotal drive for Drew Wade. I'm not even sure a length of drive is good enough. Well, at any point where they need field positions, they can't go down the third score, but they've got to get something going on. Well, Kawhi is taking more time. And they're well removed in Kawhi's Comes up with a big stop and we send it back to Lee Stevens. Well, Steve, in case some people were snoozing after a big Christmas dinner, might have missed this moment in the Sega Sports Las Vegas Bowl, New Mexico and UCLA. It was this kind of day for Los Lobos. Craig Bragg all wrapped up. Craig Bragg not wrapped up. Craig Bragg going to be able to brag. Has an escort service, legal kind, 74 yards, 27 13. The Bruins win at Red Series. Irene, Merry Christmas to uh, you and the guys back in the studio. I think those guys back in the studio uh, were kind of busy today. Weren't they uh, digging out some snow and all that kind of good stuff? Well, Crystal wasn't balmy today. Uh, no, I guess we wouldn't help them, would we? We, wouldn't, we got enough sand to deal with here, right? Yeah, okay. They can make worse, probably. Picture blue sky. That's pretty good, huh? Good look. What is it, by 80? 82? Pick it up to 80. There's a... Uh, my backyard here while we were here. Hey, you didn't run on the beach. We ran on the beach this morning, but where were you? I was uh, doing some last second preparation, Rod. Oh, okay. That's fun. 82 with the windshield. There's a player who was injured for Hawaii. And we will check on him. He's the same Malinko just changed the game. First down and goal. From the two of Roger Moore, he shot back to the field and walked his forward progress as he winds up back in his own 10. And Sobo Anga, who is returned from injury, able to make the play. For Timmy Chang fans, if you're curious, where did Mel have him in terms of returning quarterback at a number 11 for next year? Not bad. There you see Sobo Anga right there, big guy, 97, taking on the block and still making the play. It's good to see him back out there. That shot he took. From Tina Samoa, we thought was a pretty good one because he got hit in the head, but only a couple plays out before getting back in there. Second down and goal. Cover six. Lost it all to his right. And throw back to the end zone. And a goal is incomplete. A terrific play by Davis to come down with it, but clearly out of the end zone. Well, he's got skills. How did he make that grab? And Carl Davis is only a sophomore. He's not the guy you expect him to, to use an awful lot down here. He's not the biggest guy. 5'11", they've had bigger receivers there, but man, did he come up with a great catch here. Just couldn't get that foot down. One foot's all he needs. Look at that catch. Just outside. And Lawson thought he had six points there. And they need six points. They need a score to stay in this ball game. Here's a pivotal play of the football game. 11th play of the drive, upcoming. Third and goal from the seven. Lost it on the rod, throwing, and it will go incomplete. Sailed it over the head of Carl Davis. Kelvin Milhouse is there. And I like the decision right now by Telfall. He wants points. His team has worked hard. They came down the field. He wants to get points on the board so that they'll be within two scores. Seth Marler will come on and attempt the field goal. Tried earlier to tie his career high of 53 at the distance, but missed it. This will be from 20, 22 yards away. And he's able to boot it through. We'll call it 22 yards on the field goal. And Tulane is on the board. Five minutes to play in the first half. It's 14 3. And looks like Hawaii is just intent to take the lead in the locker room or not. A little hand off the cell of Mitchell. So he winds up breaking it out for a big game. That's just that little inside trap play. Yeah, I don't think it's, yeah, I mean, it's nothing fancy. And maybe you just have Tulane being asleep. And good blocking up front. And it's a nice job. Vince Monowai getting out there, doing a nice job pulling, creating a great block. And Monowai, I mean, he's a guy that, boy, is he special. I mean, he, 
He's a guy who's going to play in the NFL, no question about it. He's a big-time offensive lineman. Jim Jones said he's the best he's ever been around. Pro or pop. Uh, a guy that's been around the college game and the NFL for so long. Well, the thing that we were concerned about in talking to him, he seems a little bit pressured and stressed out about this ball game. That ball, illegal snap on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. And when we asked Monowai about that, he said, well, you know, I've got the thing going on with the agents. Right. The agents are calling, coming by, all that kind of stuff, and he's trying to prepare for the ball game as well, getting tickets for the family, all those things. You know, this was not as relaxing for him as one would have thought it would have been. And Junior Jones told him, well, hey, narrow it down to three or four guys. You know, make a decision within two weeks, and it'll be done with it. Manawai sees that you got off to a, a tough start in coaching today. If you don't pick it up, it won't be there for you at the end. And he just got to get his focus back in the hands. Here's Willie Allen stepping up, making a few people miss. And he brought down the 39-yard line. Under a minute to play here in the first half. You know, this is such an explosive offense, Rod, talking about Hawaii, yet you think they're content to go into the locker room with an eight-point lead? Uh, I don't think so at all. And June Jones, you know, is very good at clock management. I mean, he can score points quickly. He had two timeouts, now down to one. He doesn't care that he's got his backup quarterback in there. They run so many plays in practice. His backup quarterback gets almost as many as the starter because they just run so many plays. We talked to June Jones and asked him about, you know, Christmas being a, a special day for him, special to play in a bowl game, to play in Hawaii for a bowl game. And he said, you know what? Every single day is special in his life. This is from February 22nd, 2001. Was Doing through a near fatal one car accident and I think uh, I think he feels blessed every every single day um, team got a team got off to a slow start he missed all of spring practice and uh, came back they won eight of their last nine that year to finish nine and three and it is affect the way he coaches in one respect Rod and he's probably the only coach in the country who stands way back behind the line of scrimmage yeah, not ahead of him. Yeah, he, he's got, he yeah he, has, he has to be careful. I mean, he, he's not that far removed from that thing. He's still recovering. And so if he had to quickly get out of the way of something, he probably couldn't do it. And so he does stand away on the back side of the line of scrimmage. So the play is going up far away from him. You see his record, what he's done over the years. It's tremendous the success he's had here in Hawaii. So there you see. Here he is. He's right there. The play is in front of him. So he's behind the play. There's no chance of him having to rush to get out of the way of something being hit. He's giving it out to the way. He's going to get the way again. He's going to complete the pass with a short game. There's Clifton Herbert. Anthony Cannon knocks him down. One of the benefits of where he stands is he can communicate with his quarterback. And his quarterback can easily find him. And he was talking to Whitney Allen just a moment ago, yelling to him, get to the line of scrimmage. Here's what I want you to do. June Jones inherited the nation's longest active losing streak of 18 games. They were winless here in 98. They took over 99. And Hawaii went 9-4 and four that season. In his fourth season, his worst passing offense, Rod. Worst as the fourth best in the country. And they say the run and shoot <laughs> doesn't work. You know, it sounds gimmicky. The name, it almost has a negative connotation to it, like it's a trick or gimmick, blood and truth, but it is effective. We see it all over. Well, I think the reason a lot of people have trouble with it is because there's no tight end. Now, it, it, he doesn't even pretend to use a tight end. There's no tight end on the roster. And you see guys in the NFL, they will run the four wide receivers, but they all have tight ends. So they will use the four wide outs a lot, but they know they got to have a tight end. Jim Jones is the only downside is your own defense, but this is a run and shoot. In practice, you probably won't see it on Saturday for Sunday. Cochran, on the receive again. Looks like he has first down yardage. It's inside the 45. 23 seconds left, and Hawaii has a timeout left as well. Yeah, they might use this pretty soon, but Gene Jones wants him to go right now. He's waiting for the ball to be fired. They'll probably just down it, give him a chance of a shot at a couple plays with a timeout. Huh? They didn't get it off. June is not happy. He wanted them to save the timeout and go ahead and spike the ball so he could get a couple of plays. Now they've burned the timeout. June is bleeding. Now he's probably got one shot. 
16 ticks left. Hawaii out of timeout. Whippy Allen, just because he's the backup to Chang, he's not a youngster, he's a senior, and in fact had to be really patient. Wait, he had to wait four years and three games until he finally at UTEP replaced that man, Jimmy Chang. Obviously, he didn't like the reception on the TV from the locker room. Let's to see it live in a person from the tunnel. Jimmy Allen has been patient, and he's a very, very bright young player. Jimmy Allen has received the Team Scholar Athlete Award the fourth straight year. Don't let the rocks fool you, lad. No, uh, what do you call those? Scrunchy? No scrunchy? I don't know where many guys are here. Yeah, but how many guys have here? That no, that's, that's a good point. See, I was taking it to the academics and we wound up back with his hair again. Yeah. <laughs> as, as Tang looks on. 16 picks left. Again, Hawaii could not stop the clock. No timeout. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Mitchell stays in the block. Willie Allen avoids one to and able to complete the pass. To Cochran, he's able to get out of bounds. Winford Brown was there. Uh, that's a nice play. I and mean, Cochran came back for the ball. He ran away from the defensive back to come back for the ball. Knows he's got to get out of bounds. And with the Allen puts it right on the money. On the move, gain of 18. Look at this. That's a good job. Already in field goal position, although this would be a long field goal. Justin Ayat is long on the season, 50 yards. This one, however, will be from 43. High snap. Willie Allen, the holder, the quarterback, throws and completes. And brought down is Ryan Stickler. And the pressure is California. And that will do it. The final play of the half. So drive didn't go exactly the way Hawaii would have liked. Chris Selfo uh, takes some satisfaction with him into the locker room. Clearly the underdog in this game. Dulane trailing Hawaii 14-6 at halftime. And let's go down to the field and Alex. June Jones, you know about Timmy Chang that he has a jam thumb, obviously. How different is your game plan without him if that goes to that? Well, really, it's, uh, he, Timmy has a quicker release and stuff, so I call, trying to call some things to get the ball out faster. Uh, we've, we've made some plays. Sean's done a good job. I think we had a touchdown if the ball hadn't got deflected, uh, you know, when he was throwing it. But, you know, he'll do good. Eight points ahead going into the half. Is that enough for you? No, you know, I, I, I always feel like whenever you're in these kind of games, when you got a chance to get up like that, if you let the team hang around, the, the momentum turns at halftime, so we got to really stay focused right now. All right, Coach, thank you. Okay, thank you. Alex, thank you. Thanks to Coach Jim Jones as well. He's got an eight-point game as we head to half. We are at halftime in Honolulu, the inaugural Canagra Foods Hawaii Bowl, and the Warriors lead the Green Wave. Not surprising they lead, but they only lead by eight. As we look back, the ESPN game track from the store lines the first half. Jimmy Chang injured. We don't know if we'll see him in the second half. Yeah, Jim Thumb really hurt them late in the second half. They weren't able to get anything going. John Whippy Allen came in and they didn't get any scores. And Tulane near missed it in the first half. Carl Davis, opportunity to get one, couldn't get the feet down. A second time, couldn't get it in. And then they had an opportunity on a real pick. Didn't get anything out of it. Called back. No defensive score, no pick six, no touchdown for them in the first half by Tulane. They had some opportunities, they got away from them, but their defense has been outstanding. Steve Levy, Rod Gilmore from Honolulu, along with Alex Flanagan, wishing you all a very Merry Christmas wherever you're watching this game from. And I think, you know, you point out the near misses, the fact is this is an eight-point football game. Hawaii was a heavy favorite coming into this game. It's virtually a home game for them. But we don't know about the status of Tim Chang from the second half. And uh, that makes for an interesting second half. Well, I, I think this is exactly what Chris Elfo, the coach of Tulane, was asking for. Get close. Stay close. And the extra benefit is Timmy Chang being banged up. Nobody likes to guy get hurt. But if you're Chris Elfo, you figure your odds improve that Timmy Chang is not on the field. Un-Chang-like numbers there. The Senate sacked three times the first half alone. 
Some of the first half statistics. Tulane really a problem. That stands out. That's probably why that gold line is going on. One for nine for them. Uh, they're going to have to get some plays. And that means J.P. Lawson. And he's going to have to make some big third down throws. You saw a couple near misses in our game track highlight. But they got to make some big throws to get first down to keep drives alive. Mentioned Alex. And here she is. Well, Steve, you guys talked about Timmy Chang. He is not going to return for the second half. June Jones just informed me of that. His um, thumb, if you guys can see at some, at some point in this game, is about the size of my forearm here. It is really, really swollen. On the other side, J.P. Lawson is also banged up. Uh, Coach Selko said that his back is affecting him a little bit. Not enough, though, to make a huge difference. They're going to go ahead and play him, Steve. Wow, Alex, that is uh, significant. Certainly shocking news. We both fully expected Chang to return. And Alex says, at least for now, that is not the case. Well, this really changes the complexion of the ball game for Hawaii. You heard June Jones before the half saying, well, he's got to call a shorter route, quicker release things, because Whitney Allen doesn't have the same quick release. That means you won't see as many deep throws, as many intermediate throws from Whitney Allen. And don't be surprised, Dwayne will understand. And the second half is underway. Turn the kick to open half number two, and he's able to get it out to the 26 yard line. JP Lawson will lead the green wave out. The first possession of the second half. Casey just joining us. The onside kick, the opening kickoff. The two has really tried to do everything, and they recovered the onside kick and just missed on a long field goal. Attempt. Well, he had the sense. Tulane would come out trying to be aggressive. Delpo said he wanted to do that. The onside kick, they did that. They tried a 53-yard field goal. They missed that. They keep attacking. Well, Weldon Moore has not put up the kind of numbers you would expect from him. A lot of the credit there goes to that Hawaii defense. Moore will give it a try, trying to push the pile out to the 30. Chris Brown, the man in the middle for that Hawaii offense. More, we were told, 32, 35 touches minimum, and this is a do-all, do-everything guy for Tulane, and hasn't been able to have the sentence in the first half. Well, not all that is his fault. He's running behind an offensive line that is very young and banged up. They have one guy who's trying to play with the floor. So the upfront guys are struggling as well. And when they struggle, he's struggling. But when we've seen him in the open field, we've seen his skills and his ability to make guys miss. Second down and eight. Moore is put out the far side, top of your screen. They put it close to the run off anyway. And last year, the boot of Chris Bush, and he'll bring a couple of pockets. He's across midfield. Well, when you want to get more involved in things and you're having trouble, you move him around. And Frank Selvo, the offensive coordinator, is doing that. Split him out, put him in motion, do some things. That will open things up for guys like Chris Foote. They have been able to do that since they lost to Dale Williams, their wide receiver. He makes things tougher when he's not in and it's Bush again. Chris Bush started the first five games of the season. He caught at least one pass in all of them. And then the production wasn't there. And recently he moved back into the starting lineup. Playing all these receivers have been hurt by the loss of Rodale Williams I mentioned ago, a little bit ago. I mean, he was the big play receiver for them. Hurt his ankle, third game of the season, hasn't played since then. And so they struggle to find other receivers to step up and take some of the first guys more. In that game before he was in, he really was out of it. Carolina. Lawson pass behind the fullback Chris Coleman. Gianni Alapa has the coverage on Coleman coming out of the backfield. And the loss of, you know, you talk about the other receivers, because Williams going down, really affected Lawson as well. He's a go guy, put him in a bit of a funk, and really has to find another go to guy. And when you think about it, you're a young quarterback in terms of experience. You have a young offensive line. You're going to receive and then you're running back, you can't run because you're going to run. Third and two, they take it up the middle, hands to Moore. He's got the first down and Moore. The Weldy Moore. A big game. This is exactly what they've expected out of him throughout. He's all the way down to the eight-yard line. 
Uh, I love what Frank's cell phone has done. He's moved him around. You saw him line up as a receiver. You saw him run inside. Here you get the quick toss out. Get him outside. Flip it to him. Let him attack the end. And he gets up the field in a hurry. He got an extra 13 yards after he made that guy get. 31 to a 29 yard gain on that day. Now, he's got one hand on it, but couldn't get the other to bring it down. It'll go with the pass and second down and goal. I mean, yeah, this is good coaching. I mean, I love what they're doing with Noel D. Moore. And the idea, you got a great player. He's fired in the first half. You got him a few touches. You move him around. Find a way to get the ball to him. And they've done that so far in the third part of the third quarter. And you mentioned the future being bright for Tulane's offense. 31 of 33 players on their three deep on offense. They're all coming back next year. And a flag flies. Kelvin Milhouse has been rather busy today. The coverage on James is done, and it's like it wasn't going to be good enough, the coverage in the region for the market. Well, Milhouse was beaten. John had him to the inside, and he kind of climbed his back, tripped him. Pass and a pass. The penalty occurred in the end zone. Against the defense, the ball be placed at the two yard line. First and ten. And first and goal. Millhouse is a very good corner. He knows that you got to keep the guy from getting inside. Dunn runs around him. And you see the trip there. See? Pass interference. I can say it. Wow. I can actually say it. Rare admission. <laughs> Millhouse, second team all wax this season. But he put his defensive base in a tough spot here. Put down a hole from the two. This is the good two. You got a single on the number two right here. You know the rule. It's a Reese Davis rule. He's the rule. I'm going to be on that all the way. He's got the shoulder. He's lost it. Maybe he got it down to the one yard line. On the quarterback keeper, Chris Brown, makes the stop. I'd like to know what Chris Selfo said in that locker room. And these guys have come out in the second half and made plays. I mean, they've got right down the field. Good kickoff return. Big play. Noel Moore got the ball to him like they wanted to. Here they are, second down and goal. And I think if they're going to push this thing in, Bobby Hoover is going to have to make a play in tight end. Good shot. They're going to have to get the ball down. Eighth play of the drive on second and goal of the two. He lost a good throw. And it's knocked away. Nick Narcisse had the, the opportunity there. Millhouse was there and a good defensive play that time. No hanky. Good corners forget what happened and you play the next play. Pass interference, that was then. This is now. You come back and you play well, get your head around. That's it. Took away the inside. Only allowed the receiver outside. One way he can go, one way he attack. And pick up. Look at this lower talking about this pull down territory. Turn goal for the two. Now, I, I still want to point. They are they are talking into this. They're getting there, putting it back a little bit. Keep the bitch down here. You can go kick the throw down. There's Lawson. Good is right. Cut inside. He pulled out from behind. Not even close. Was able to bring him down, but there's a flag down. It looks like the play clock had expired. They might not have snapped that in time. I think you're exactly right. And I think you're going to get a second shot at it if you're toying. But uh, going back to the fourth down here, yeah. if you don't get the touchdown, you don't kick the field goal, you lose the momentum you built up at the beginning of the third quarter. No, nope, that is true. But how about the other side? Give your offense some confidence, show them some faith. Go for the jugular, it's the game you're not playing. There's no the family on the play. There was timeout called prior to the time expiring. Timeout to Wayne, timeout number one. Uh, you can read two in Joe's lips there. He said, Baloney, Tulane will spend a timeout, and it'll be well worth it. They got the timeout apparently before the zeros on the play clock. We'll be right back. At the two-yard line. Back in Hawaii, Tulane may have saved the scoring opportunity. Watch to the left of your screen, James Dunn, the wide receiver right there, is going to actually call a timeout. 
He calls it right now. That's his hand. He calls the timeout. That saves the scoring opportunity. So June, June Jones does not win this argument. He's thinking to the right. So Wayne winds up again. Steve is taking another crack at it. Well, clearly it wasn't Austin who called it because he carried out the play. You know he didn't call the timeout. Good job. The eyes of Rod Gilmore. Third down and goal for the two. Here we go. Rodgers rolling it away. Under pressure. In big trouble now. And he's going to go down in a big way. Dropping the 17 yard line. Not a really cool end. We're having to jump more than he's going to be. The Warrior defense. And now I'll tell you a question about this defensive team there. Well, I think you have to. So Leia and David Gilmore both got in there, but you got to have coverage to make this happen. And that's exactly what Hawaii had. Watch Milhouse. The pass interference you talked about, you forgot about it. You got to shut down over there. Nothing doing. How about on the other side? You want to look that way? Not going to happen. You got good coverage over there. And the field goal attack is blocked. The 34 yard field goal attack is blocked. And a crazy, and a crazy turn of events here against Tulane. Well, part of the problem goes back to the set. As a quarterback, you cannot take that sack in the red zone. You must preserve the scoring opportunity and throw the ball away. You can't take the sack and push them back. You created this opportunity. You see how momentum shifts when you let bad things happen? And the penalties on the athlete play. Gets off first for five. coordinator told us a couple days ago, hey, we're aggressive. Our offense is aggressive. We're aggressive. We're going to go after the sack. If we get beat, we give up the touchdown. If we give up the touchdown. Our offense gets back on the field. You know what? They can score. Clearly, we're doing. Marler was attempting from 34, had it blocked. And that will give Hawaii the football back. And the penalty, the extra regular after the block, pushes the back of the uh, run. I saw J.P. Larson on the sideline. He's telling his coach, I'm straight. I'm straight. <laughs> All right. This turn is going to be I got it. I'm pretty good. I didn't make that mistake. Sean Willie Allen. Again, playing at place with Jimmy Chang. Sean Willie Allen airing it out. Too much air on it. Justin Cole was the agent. The target Jeff Sanchez was running with him. When Timmy Chang was in in the first half, they scored a couple touchdowns. There were some times when they didn't get things done. But once Timmy Chang left, they had trouble. You see Timmy Chang there, no helmet. Doesn't look like he's going to get out there. You heard Alex's report about the thumb. Remember, Steve, that is the same hand that he had a problem with earlier this year with the pinky and the wrist that he had surgery. Yep. I think uh, Alex said his thumb has blown up the size of her forearm. And we know she's got big forearms. <laughs> she works out all the time. Popeye forearms she has, yeah. Second down and 10. Willie Allen. Throwing. And it's knocked away. Good defensive play by Linares L. Page. Jeremiah Cocker. Rod, how does this affect the defense? You're preparing solely for Chang, 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 and they get Woody Allen, but he didn't well, I think you expect to jump routes like you saw there, because you think the quarterback wants to get comfortable, he's going to throw short, intermediate routes, nothing deep. So you saw the deep route earlier in this drive. That was an attempt to send a message to the defensive back. You can't get comfortable and jump on our route. But if I'm a defensive back out there, I'm going to jump routes until this guy proves to me he can beat me down the field. Willie Allen, so far, 6 of 11, 61 yards, and he was picked off one time. And a hand off to John West. Close to first down yard. That's a good win for the Tulane defense. That block kick, sudden change situation. 
sudden change, you're on the sideline, all of a sudden you got to grab your helmet and run on the field and play defense. It's a mental check. They pass the mental check test there. They get the ball back to their offense. Tulane sitting in pretty good shape right now. They got a fourth down and one. Matt McBriar has had himself a pretty good game. Averaging 58.7 yards on his three punts so far. Maybe a pretty good game for some other state. And that one's a low line drive. And a bounce is right in the hands of Edwards. Okay, just 30. Curry down the sideline. It's a blind kick to the left side. Cuts back in. Touchdown. Put out. Okay. Edwards is going to be the first down. A 60 yard punt return for a touchdown. And it's a two point game. And the momentum swings back. It waves back in favor of Tulane. How do you like that Christmas present to Junior? His three-month-old son. Did anyone do something special for him? How about a punt return where you make four tacklers miss? It's a kick stick. There's one. There's two. Watch a great move at the end here. Right there. Four missed tackles. A lot of that on his own. Tremendous. Seventh career touchdown, done it five different ways. And he's got the two-lane sideline all jacked up in a two-point game now. And right now, that, that pig that was being led to the luau to be slaughtered, yeah. that pig is kicking and fighting and not going down. 10.44 left, here's third quarter. And again, McBriar has been outstanding punting the football, low-line drive. And LP picked it up on a solid hop. Tulane scored 12 unanswered points after Wyatt the 14 left to the lot of discussion on that far sideline, Rod. What do you think it is? <laughs> maybe, maybe Coach Selfo's not aware of the restatement rule. I think, I think he's still kicking. You know, so much going your way. You can throw the third quarter. Selfo with the green. He's going for two and the tie. Lost it. Airmailed that one. Tristan Smith, not even close. 10.39 to go. Here in the third. Capital One bowling rolls on. Tulane's not going anywhere. This is a two-point game. But our Del Pace told us at first he really just wanted to go to a bowl game, any bowl game. Then found out it was the Hawaii Bowl. He can have a food to Hawaii Bowl. So it was a bonus. And I would say a 60 yard punt return for a touchdown would serve as a Christmas bonus. And we'll probably have a pretty good time in the world right about now. Yeah, he's done your proud. He's had a great week here. About the only thing he did do was search very well. You can do that. Yeah. You guys can do that. Two-point game, there is a flag down. All of a sudden, there's lots of laundry on the field, Rod. Kind of slows down the game a bit. We've had a kind of quite a quite a few. You're gonna have a passing game anyway. A lot of flags today. And this one had to be after after the fact, after the ball was down in the end zone. 16 no penalties foul. already. Well, personal foul against the receiver. The player's ejected. Wow. That's got to be over the line. I mean, you've got to be fighting for your punch and doing something to be ejected. That's not your normal personal foul. We'll see if we can pick it up. Where it happened. The player has been ejected for Hawaii. And it was after the ball had been down in the end zone. After the play was done. They have not told us which player has been ejected to this point. I guess we can watch see who heads for the long way. Chad Kapanui, I believe, is the player for Hawaii who has been ejected from the game. 
sophomore from here in Honolulu. Got the war paint on there, right? No, he's out of the game. He's out of the war. No more battling for him. The interesting thing is, really, what did he do? How, how bad was it? Had to be pretty bad to be injected immediately. Like that. With the Allen throwing. Just too high. Cochran went up for it. Maybe sailed through his hands. And we've got everybody scoring in the ESPN truck. And apparently, uh, whatever he did, he did it out of review of our many, many cameras. Well, I'm pretty certain it had to be a punch. He had to throw a punch and hit somebody. Fighting you get ejected for immediately. It's rare to find an official who will eject the guy for language or tossing the ball or something like that. It had to really go beyond the scope and be a punch. So the ejection there. I wonder if you can hear it on a microphone. The wind has really, really whipped up here. They go incomplete to Colbert. I wouldn't expect any sympathy, Rod, from people close to the Northeast. But we got a, we got a little wind here in well, Hawaii. I can't tell if it's having any impact on the field down there because in this stadium, the field is so low and protected on so many areas. There's not a, a real open end where the wind just blows through. This is the Aloha Stadium. We sight of a pro bowl every year. With the Allen now, dealing with the wind, 0 for 4 passing so far here this quarter. Third down and 10. With the Allen steps up and he won't be complete. Clifton Herbert comes down with it and he has first down yardage. Hey, see, let's go back. I think we have Chad Tapanue actually caught in action. Here he is right here. There's number five. Watch. Watch Chad Tapanue and see what happens here. He's holding on. And there's a punch. He saw the right arm go back. Just as he went out of the frame, there was a right-handed punch. I saw him start to throw as he came out of the frame. And fighting, throwing a punch, will get you rejected immediately. That's how you know when a guy's done. You know, also, no shoulder pads and done through the day. Number 10 to go here in the third quarter. Hand off from Mitchell. Grant Quick made the tackle for Tulane. Well, if you're June Jones, the disturbing thing is that you don't have any rhythm. The, the offense is totally out of rhythm. There's nothing fluid about this run and shoot right now. And timing is so important to the run and shoot. With Timmy Chang on the sideline, it just might be that the timing is going to be off for a long time until Whitney Allen can get into the flow and on the same page with his receivers, reading the coverages and deciding the routes to run and they see the coverage. Send the man in motion, back and forth for his And Chad Owens for live to see. Not much he's doing there. Again, Willie Allen had to be patient. Had to wait for four years and three games. Finally got a crack at UTEP to replace Chang on his second collegiate pass for a 25-yard touchdown. Well, like I said, he, he gets the rest in practice. But when you think about game time experience, Timmy Chang, more than 600 throws. Yep. This guy, at 55, coming into the game. That's a big difference. Yeah. The face is confidence, and all that goes with the reps in practice and in game situation. Chang has led them from behind, and Woody Allen has not. He's just playing with the lead, but it's only two points. Clifton Herbert is the target there. Pressure from Marlon Tickles. You see, speed of the game is important. The more you play, the slower the game becomes. As a quarterback or defensive back or whatever you play, when you don't play a lot, you don't see the entire field and the game happens fast. The longer you play, the more of the field you see and the slower the game becomes. And right now, I think with the Allen, yeah, the game is at more speed. Linares Elpage is back at his 32, waiting for another crack at this rod. Matt McBride off a low snap. Nice punt by McBride. Elpage, number 27. And a 60 yard punt return for a touchdown last time. Looking for the sideline. Talk about the warp speed. He's down to the 17 yard line. And McBride, the punter, has to make the stop. And somebody on the Hawaii sideline is saying, 
Why are you kicking the ball to him? 56-yard return. A 60-yard return for a touch last time. This one for 56. Yeah, hit him up for a big one. This is almost another kick six. Well, look at the great blocking. He sees the lane right away. Great vision, and then still great blocking. Good footwork. Can't say enough about what the special teams have done on those returns. Chino Fontenet made a good block to help him out. Not even close. Kristen Smith is all turned around, and Lostman will pick himself up off the tip. Now he's been high on his throws all day, particularly down around the red zone. But you know, it's easy for me up here to say you ought to be on time with it. But when you've got somebody about to knock the right. living daylight out of you, look at it. <laughs> That's a hard hit up high from Houston Ara. Second down and ten. So Lostman is missed on his last two attempts. Smith in motion on the near side. Ross going to look to the left. Able to complete the Nick Narcisse. And it'll be a short game. And the clock continues to count down. Eight minutes and counting left here in the third quarter. In a two-point game and Tulane looking to take the lead. Well, I think they've got to come up with that play. You know, the special play. You get the red zone, you have a third down play, you practice that all week. There's a one, one play you think you like in the right situation. I'm sure they have it. I believe it's got to be Smith. You want to get Smith. Sometimes a one-on-one situation is worth the ball in. Third down and five. Conversions are going to problem all game. Dumped across the middle. Will he get to the blocker? He will. First down yard. It's for Paul Davis. And it'll set up a first and goal for Tulane. And they're going right on the ball. They're, they're picking up the pace. And they're really trying to keep Hawaii on their heels. No huddle. Right back on the ball. Quickly. They're 23 seconds on the clock. They're almost ready to snap it right away. Lights are on here at the stadium, taking full effect. Hand it off to the well more. He'll bang down to the one yard line. No surprise that Moore would catch the ball on the first down play down here. They got so much out of that. Why not give it to them again? See the lights coming on here. Starting to get kind of crowded. Lost it. Taking a crack at it. He got cracked by Leonard Peters. Cracked back, yeah. Leonard Peters, the true freshman. Yeah, true freshman only goes at 175, but watch him high him up. He sees him, comes right up, gets him high. Good job. Gets a little bit of help. And that friendly fire came along also. Here's Carmen Gold now. Lost another quarterback seat, waiting for the indication. And there it is. Touchdown. With 6.17 left in the third, all Tim Chang can do for now is watch. And there is a flag. Lostman had an indication as if somebody might have gotten him around the throat area. Maybe another personal foul. Unfortunate conduct, dead ball, against the defense, the effort is going to go. Well, Chris Delco had already made the decision to go for two. This makes it easier for him now, you move closer. Let's take a look and see what happens at the end of this, but good push up front. I believe you're right, I think it was with Lawson. Plays over, he's still in the pile. I think you're right, yeah, somebody yeah, got him. Yeah. Some undisciplined play by Hawaii. Lots of penalties, personal fouls. An ejection. And they find themselves now trailing 5-4. And it was actually a home game for them. A rare home bowl game. Going for two. Second attempt for the two-point conversion. Lawson's going to step in on top. He stays on his feet for the two-point conversion. 6-17 left in the third. And Tulane, who is high flying away, 20 to 14. 
Now we talked about the young offensive line when they were having problems. How about that young offensive line on this drive? And in particular, this play. That time, Rossman, nobody was within a couple yards of him. And Rod L. Page sets it up with a 56-yard punt return. Yep. Gave him the short field. He just looked right up the middle. Hey, we could all get through that one. Nobody, nobody near you at all. This was a 14 to nothing game in favor of Hawaii. And Tulane has answered back with 20 unanswered. 20 to 17, the green wave right now on ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2002 Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. Brought to you by Sheraton Waikiki. On Hawaii's most legendary beach, Sheraton Hotels and Resorts Waikiki. The heart and soul of Waikiki. And by the Unwrap, a Jaguar holiday event. Well, right now, here in Hawaii, Tulane is playing the role of Grinch trying to steal Christmas away from the Warriors. In a 20 to 14 game. Hawaii 14 points for the 14 of the lead. Tulane 20 unanswered. 6-17 to play here in the third quarter. And Hawaii can't look at Tim Jack to bring him back. Not this time. Seth Barlow puts it in the end zone, nearly out of the end zone. Marley's been so good, only 30 of his kickoffs have been returned all season, the fewest in Conference USA. We got a quarterback conference here, you see with the Allen, number seven, you also see Jason Wood at number eight, which one is going on the field, because this offense, nothing in the third quarter. 27 yards, Steve, on nine plays, that's it. It's going to be with the Allen for now. Wilden was warming up. Wilden is junior from Orange, California. So actually, four games during the regular season. But for now, it's with the Allen time. Wilden, we're well, on the sideline. Again, for now, subject to change. On first down and ten. With the Allen. Poised in the pocket. They're going to complete the short pass. With Justin Colbert, took up a second down and short after the game of three. Well, we talked about the Tulane secondary playing well. They, they've done a nice job all game of disguising their coverages. I mean, what they're doing is they're trying to show this all game. Two deep, 22. You know, two guys out, two guys deep. They show that as a shell. They play it sometimes. And then sometimes they come out of the speed and play man to man. But that's the look they try to get on every play. Second down and three. Always in motion, but they put it out with a flat. They made it to the rock. And he's got first down, y'all. Hawaii to 20, 21 points, we're going to win this game. You know, that sounds unthinkable, the way the Hawaii offense plays this game. 20, 21 points, are you kidding? Right now, number to 14. Got in the air, loose football. Hit the ground. Marlon Tickles, who got a strong game up front for Tulane, able to get a hand on it. And he's an athlete. What a guy. I mean, when he was in high school, he was a point guard. <laughs> hey, what, six feet, six one, and two ninety now? They listed at six one, three hundred. <laughs> point guard in high school. This guy's supposed to be great at ping pong. And the coaches said, well, he can even throw the football. You know, we'll think about those big defensive tackles being able to throw those pretty spirals. Apparently, this guy can do everything. Good at knockdown pass. Living out will throw. And hit Owen with a short game. Sean Lucas right there on him. Game of four. Sean Lucas and Anthony Cannon, two freshmen who are playing on their defense, have done a great job in the nickel pack. And they have made good tackles. They've come up. They haven't thrown any coverages. And typically, a team will throw coverages against Hawaii and you see a guy running free for an easy touchdown. That has not happened. 
Thank you. Credit to uh, Eric Suman, their defensive coordinator. We asked him to be afraid of what passing the white end because I'm more afraid than my players are. But they're excited. They show no fear here today. Ulawa will make another catch across midfield, gain of nine. Let's go down to the field. Who's Alex? Hey, Nate. Aloha. With one of the top recruits coming out of high school schools like Miami, Oklahoma, and Virginia Tech all actually wanted him. Now, June Jones got him to come to Hawaii by recruiting his father. His father is in the Marine Corps, as is mine, and had been transferred to the Marine base here in uh, Oahu. And so June told Nate's dad, hey, you want to see your son play? Get him to come here. And that was all it took, Steve. This is the recruitment dad. That's amazing. Good military son. Yeah. Jeremiah Cockerman comes up with a catch. Jay Ashton brought him down. Ilawa, it's a big day for him because he's going to go under the knife tomorrow. He's been playing with a, a shoulder injury for most of the season. And he will have surgery tomorrow, win or lose. Speaking of injuries, Cockerman is down on the football field now. And he's face down to the turf. Well, if he comes out of this ball game, pretty length of time, the Hawaii offense will really have a problem. They've lost Chang already, you know, their best quarterback, and this guy is their big play receiver. You take those two guys out of this offense, it's a different offense. And try, try to play from behind, too. It's not like you're protecting the lead. He's up here. You'll see him come on inside, and he'll make the catch, and he'll take a couple hits. Let's see if we can... See exactly what happens to him. Uh, he comes down. He goes up high. He comes down on him. Striking like down on his shoulder. So. Nice ovation from the home fans here. Jeremiah Cochran. The numbers on him for the game. Had a big game against Alabama. Nine catches, 270 yards for Cochran. The sixth best single game receiving in school history. Seven catches today. And this is people I got a lot of respect in the college football world. We really lost to Alabama here on like three or five points. And they played them very tough. And but for some mistakes early, they might have won that ball. It's the Mitchell running and spinning down the 40 yard line. Anthony Cannon was stopped. You talk about Hawaii and getting respect. You look at their season. They're lost to Alabama, and then they lost to a very, very good Boise State team and that a lot of people haven't seen. And then the other loss was BYU, and the BYU loss came early when Timmy Chang was really banged up. Well, I got hot down the stretch one seven of the last eight. The only loss, Rod, was that uh, home loss to Alabama. Now, this is a team that went nine and three last year. There was no goal for them to go to. Well, people are more happier than, than we are about having a Hawaii ball and having these Hawaii balls. Hawaii is set. Here they are. And the pressure pops up the football. Ooh. And it's still loose and it's finally picked up by Tulane. It's Terry Corbin. Out there, four yard line. And it was Anthony Cannon who made the play happen. And Steve, remember, turnover. We talked about them earlier. This is the number one team in the NCAA in causing turnovers. They have 40 takeaways coming into the ballgame. But Anthony Cannon, you'll see him right here. Playing as the linebacker, about six feet, 210 pounds of freshman comes in and makes this play. Puts a heck of a lot of pressure on Ricky Allen, causes the ball to come out. And Tulane in business with another takeaway, Steve. Tarver had missed the final two games of the season with a groin injury. It's almost two months since you played a game when you think about it. Uh, if you are a Hawaii guy, a Hawaii fan, you're wondering if you hit the ball, was it a bump or hit the ball, you come out with a throwing attack. And Noel D. Moore will carry the pile down to the 25 yard line. And this team has turned. Think about it. Marler has the punt block. And it looks like it's all set up for Hawaii. And Tulane never got rattled. First down and 10. 
two and a half left third quarter. Give it a more. He's bagging straight ahead. Got some help from the official again. And he gets it. Shopper Brewing in Hawaii. It's all too lame right now. And great back will make you miss tackle. Chris Brown missed a tackle in there. And Morelli Moore did the rest of it. Ah! Ah! Chris Berman says, Rod. That's why they play the game. Hey. <laughs> Chris Selfo told us yesterday, nobody, nobody except the guys on your team believe they have any kind of chance in this ball game. He said it truly was. They're guys that get to work. And they're going to go for two again. Well, they have to. Once you start going for it, you got to keep the catch up the air. So. Lost it. Throw it. And they got one for three on two-point conversions today. 2.16 left here in the third quarter. Hawaii used to have a 14 to nothing lead. Tulane is countered. 26 unanswered. They're late in the third quarter. Hawaii fumble and touchdown back-to-back. -back. Was it a fumble? The rule is, if the arm is moving forward, any indication of forward movement, then it is a pass. The arm is not moving forward. The ball comes out before the arm makes any movement forward. You have a fumble. That leads to Tulane coming right back. Noelle Moore getting a great block inside by his right guard, Seth Downbreaker, on the trap play, getting the touchdown. Moore really struggled in the first half. 12 carries, 22 yards. But in the second half, Noelle Moore after the first quarter alone, five carries to 70. And they did big time fighting. 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 Disastrous for Hawaii. Well, there is no momentum on the Hawaii sideline, and June Jones desperately needs for his offense to get something going. Chad Owens, was he down? I thought he was clearly down when this was called. Tackle had occurred, ball comes out. He's on top of the other, he's on top of the guy, but then he's down. Uh, what, gonna wait for his knee to roll over and... Woody Allen still on that. He dropped it. He's a football. He did. Roy Dorsey stripped it away and able to recover. And they are going after him with the out. They're turning it loose, going after him. A little bit of old concern if you're with the out after the last fumble. This one just gets slapped away. What else can go wrong for the Warriors? Uh, young quarterback, inexperienced quarterback, go after him. That's what happens again. Yeah. Good movement. Boy. Oh, my goodness. Boy, Dorsey just yeah. reached around. Forced the fight. Oh. 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 And Jim Jones is thinking, oh. what in the world do I have to do just to get a playoff? Oh. Oh. It's going to the Hawaii offense. The last four possessions. Oh. Oh. Get a 60 and 50. Oh. Get your punch up the last two fumbles. First down and goal, for Tulane. Hand off to the Wildy Moore, he's not going anywhere. A minute 50 to play, here in the third. He laid up 12 and looking for more. The boy made the stop for a while. Sports Center, if you're looking for that, will come up immediately following our game. And if you're Hawaii and looking for something, you better have your defense step up now. Good play, and you've 
got to keep Hawaii and to Tulane to a field goal here. That's so important for Hawaii. They have to do that. Now, on the other side, if you're J.T. Lawson, if you're throwing this ball, you cannot take a sack, you cannot force a throw. He's got to show you learn that previous goal is not a good Down on the goal line, you're never supposed to let the receiver get inside. That time, he gets inside of Abe Elamimian and has a shot to make the play. Gets his hands on it. That angle, it looked like he did not have to throw. The ball was coming out and fell through his knee. and Lofton went right over the gun and said, hey, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's the right way. It's the tip. It was So I made it to the And here's the roar from the crowd. Coming from this angle. There he is, Elamimium. And he was so far inside, he was standing there practically. I mean, that looked so bad, such a short corner. You know, you wonder, was there some mistake by Hawaii? Because that's a short corner. Maybe they didn't have enough guys out there, but he should never be that close to the kick. I do love college football. This, this is wild today. You've had a good year. Man, <laughs> unpredictable. The only thing predictable about it is it's going to be unpredictable. There is a player down on the field. I think that's Abe Elamimium who's down. I think you're right. You know, and, and he might have been... He might have been standing up when he brought that thing because he had already suffered the injury. Because it didn't look like he didn't lay out going after it. You watch him come out the corner. See how he's standing up? Uh, he came down his ankle, right ankle, rolled the right ankle. So you see it right there. Coaching staff told us Elaminian, he's a very, very confident kid, confident player, confident in his ability. And we'll see if we're going to shake that off. Well, when you get eight picks in the season, you have reason to be confident. 12 point game, a minute to play, third quarter. It's still with the Allen. Cuts off on the screen on the check down to Lawa. Well, you talk about a new quarterback coming in. How's he compared to the old guy who's in? Well, almost the same number of attempts. The yards are okay. The big difference? Ball security. The ball has come out of Ricky Allen's hands twice. Been on the carpet. They've recovered. It's led to scores. Timmy Chang took better care of the football when he was in the ball game. You know, Chang was still the game, Rod. You'd say 12 points. You kind of laugh at that. That's nothing for Chang in there with the Hawaii offense. But without him, you have to wonder. Lily Allen. Gets good pass protection. Got green in front of him. And he wants it to take out the people. He bumped out the 34. Wesley Heath put a lift on him. And he got out there because he got a great block by Ryan Santos and Daniel Neville. Gain a 12 on the play. Now, when a quarterback decides to go, his lineman has got to help him out. And he'll yell, go to him. The lineman will get out there and give him a block. Nine seconds to play in the third quarter. Coming up on three and a half hours to play. Three quarters. You sound surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you figured you were going to get 50 to 60 passes by Hawaii, and who knows what Tulane was going to give you. 
With the Allen hands off inside hand up the third. Mitchell. Mitchell's out to the 39-yard line. Back to Sheldon to stop. And that will do it. Three quarters from Honolulu complete. A beautiful sunset in the backdrop. And it's all good for Tulane, up by 12 after three. For the fourth quarter, the inaugural Conagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. 14 points for Hawaii to open the score, 26 unanswered by Tulane. Along with Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan, and our entire crew, Steve Levy, wish you all Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and wishing for you mostly to stay tuned. As we are through here, Sports Center will come your way immediately after the game. Not a single player on this two-lane roster had ever played in a bowl game prior to this one. That's allowed to get a good bowl experience here, though. And they had a good time to boot. Yeah, leading up to the game. Here's Willie Allen now. And he is brought down. What a tackle with one on by Rocky Shelton of Tulane. Let's send it down on the field. Here's Alex Flanagan. Hey, Steve. Sean Willie Allen is actually a local kid, so fans are pretty happy to see him out there. He graduated last week with a degree in communications with a 3.8 GPA. He actually was recruited pretty hardly uh, by Harvard University. He was accepted there. They wanted him to come there, but he chose to stay home in instead. So making some folks proud here tonight getting in the game, Steve. Alex, a communications degree. What's he thinking? Look at us. Communications is the way to go, Rod. It's amazing to have. I would certainly vote for that. Other guys will take my job in a few years. Cochran, Bobby completion able to pick up out to the 41-yard line, and maybe with the Allen starting to settle in, gain some confidence, some relatively easy passes to complete. And having a guy like Cochran back in the lineup, he walked out after he was banged up a little bit. Having him back in will give you some confidence. You know you've got a big play guy. you got a guy who you get the ball to, you can do something with it after the catch. And that's what they need. They need somebody to help Willie Allen out and make a big play. This is fourth and a long one. How about a big play here? Number 42. Three receivers to his left. One to the right. Willie Allen looking left and throwing in a seam. Got his man Culver. Down the sideline. Forget about it. He's all by himself. And now he's all by himself in the end zone. Justin Culver. A 57-yard touchdown from Sean Willie Allen. And Hawaii is right back in the football game. Took a gamble and lost. Well, Boger actually comes over. And it looked like there was a blown coverage early. Sanchez was the corner to that side. They may not have had somebody covered. It was a problem. And that's Hawaii's first touchdown catch pass of the game. Sean Willie Allen has got the Warriors right back in this one. Justin Colbert on the receiving end of that touchdown pass in his 38th consecutive start, leading the way for the offense. A scoring drive that took 239. Now Colbert looking for some help. Not worried about his defense, worried about the crowd. And getting Aloha Stadium fired up again. 86 yards scoring drive is a five point game. We'll see how Tulane will respond. And they start first and 10 from their own 20. And let's go back to that touchdown, Steven. It may look like Clay Bowser made the mistake over here, but it's really Jeff Sanchez the corner. Watch, he's going to jump this route here, and that's not the play. It's the outside receiver. Watch, it's going to be here. Uh, you see him jumping? That's not the one he needed. And it was Justin Colvin going down the sideline at the corner. He never jumped the number two receiver and allowed the number one receiver to run down the sideline. I'll tell you what, it doesn't seem as if there are that many people still 
Iowa Stadium, but those that are here are making some noise, making their presence felt. Lusted will keep it off the play action and lower the shoulder and bang down after the 31-yard line. Yeah, we talked about competing. You know, we had the lunch the other day and the players talking about what you know, being in the bowl game, competing. I talked about competing. This is competing. JT Wilder, he can run. He wants the first out of him to compete. You want to take me on? I will take you on. I'll pick up the first down. Rossman's got that prototypical quarterback size, those 6'3", 200 pounds. That's Junior in his first year and starting quarterback. And there's California. And that's the high pretty good one by the name of Patrick Ramsey. Walked in for a couple of years. Hand off this time with the Weldy Moore out to the 35-yard line. So uh, Chris Selfo wanted to get to the fourth quarter and have a shot at this ball game. Now, the thing people have asked about the two-point conversion. Why keep going for them? Three of them. Yeah. And they they went one for three. If you don't go one for three, you just kick the BAT. You get two more points out of the three. Right? Correct. You're at 28 at least. If you do all three, you're 29. That's why we have that three skaters where you don't do it for the first quarter. You let them come back and haunt them. Well, pitch some more. Stutter stepping his way out to the 37. Tulane will try to shorten this game, milk some clock, and make this fourth quarter go by as quickly as possible. But I just got a hunch here, Rod. 26-21 will not be the final score. That's just me and Kobe crazy, you think? And just to you know, I, I think you might be onto something. Uh, this team, I don't know what I'll do on Pick up the game. Third down and three. The bucket move for Tulane, you see out of the bottom of the scoreboard, the 3 of 14 on third down to third, with a 2 lead by 5. Lost in all trouble, gets out of it, completes the pass to Moore, the first down yardage, and then some. And the Weldy Moore across midfield. And a terrific play by Lofton. Yeah, he's making a play. This is making a play when you have to. J.P. Lofton, he's up here. He's going to get Travis LeBoy coming up. Number one, he's going to make the play and get around him. LeBoy's free. There he is, number one. Ha. Number one, LeBoy, LeBoy with all the speed and quickness. He can't make the play. The Weldy Moore gets down the field for a couple more missed tackles. Moore is now over 100 yards rushing to go along with his 52 yards receiving. Moore, each of the last two seasons, has led the team in rushing and receiving. Rostin is second this season in rushing. Went with a pump and then the handoff to Moore. And he's out down inside the 41 yard line. Chris Brown finally brought him in. Yeah, Tulane told us they had to get at least 35 touches. Morality more, and Coach Fred Albert said at halftime, "Hey, you've got to get the ball more in the second half." Well, the coaches had that plan. Fred saw that, and now they're doing it. They're getting the ball there more in the second half, and they're getting great results. Great drive to open the second half. Five two lead, really set the tone. Rossman rolling to his right. All of a sudden, it opened up for him. A lane opened wide open for him, and he's now inside the thirty-yard line. Well, he did a nice job when he got outside. He froze the guy who was out there trying to deal with him. Watch Lockman on this run. I mean, you don't find many quarterbacks that are that big and that athletic. Watch him here. Freeze him, freeze him, get down outside. Matthew, the coaching staff told they'd like to see him run the football a little more. There's a good example of why. He can do it. Fourth quarter. Tulane trying to score the upset. Up by five. And Moore is brought down at the 30 yard line. Well, remember, we saw trouble with ball control down here in the red zone. And now, if you're involved in once again, you don't want to make mistakes down here. You have a chance to get three points. It puts more pressure on the wide. So you want to make sure you get something out of it. You're at the 31 yard line. Don't back up. Chad Kalizzi Moku made that stop for the loss of two. Second and 12. 
juggles momentarily, and then wow, Chris Bush looks like he had it in his hands. Leonard Peters was right there with him. That freshman has played a heck of a game in the secondary in place of Hiram Peters. And Leonard Peters, everybody knew he was talented, but for a freshman to step up late in the season in a big game and deliver the hit that he has, truly outstanding. Bush looks like he's banged up a little bit and being attended to. That's just a big hit. He just separates the receiver from the ball. And that's just good stuff. And one thing I thought about that play, I thought he had a shot to pick that ball off and he had gone after the ball. But you know, some safeties like to intimidate and control the middle. Nothing wrong with that. And that freshman shows you some intimidation on that play. Block is stopped with the injury, but another solid two-lane drive. Nice play up coming. They're taking better than four minutes off the clock. Comes your way immediately following this game. There's third down as well. From the 30. Boston steps up nearly under center. Now lost it down the sideline. And it is caught. It's a catch by Morelby Moore, the running back out of the backfield. That's unbelievable. Rossby out of the shot, but then steps up. When he received the snap. Well, <laughs> that was something. You got two great players out there going after it. But well, well, Moore, he's a kid out Samoa. He had him in the man coverage, and this is a tremendous catch. Watch Luol Moore just make the leap at the end of this. That is something. He just crossed over in and out Samoa. First and goal. And inside the five. Lost and left to the end zone. He's got some more. J.P. Rossman. Matt Wright nearly had a chance to bring him down. Couldn't make the tackle. And Rossman is back into the end zone. And J.P. Rossman shows some quick and had a little shake in him to make Matt Wright miss the tackle inside the five-yard line. Second rushing touchdown of the game for Lofman, who also has a two-point conversion. You got a quarterback with a strong arm, a quarterback who can show you some good footwork and run like that. You've got some danger. That is danger. That's big-time stuff. Rod, you go for two and you don't get it. You're playing catch-up. They're going to go for two again. Like I said, once you start it and you miss it, you got to keep going to make the numbers work for you. Keep trying to catch up. 11 points in. They're going to make it 13. Fourth two-point conversion attempt of the game for Kuwait. Rossman will throw, and they'll get the two. They'll make it two for four in the game. 4-2 lane. Hits Demarcus Davis. The true freshman from Freeport, Louisiana, on the two-point conversion. Rossman on that drive. Ran three times for 28 yards. And the touchdown. Able to connect on two or three passes for 43 yards. J.P. Rossman. Able to connect. And then a two-point conversion. We knew the Hawaii offense wouldn't be on the field that often with that explosive offense. But the two-lane offense, look at this. A scoring drive, 10 plays, 80 yards, take four and a half off the clock. You know, you think about a long drive like that, you dominate the mistake drive. Not the case in this one way off, but not on the script to say. Well, they had the quarterback make some plays. And that helps avoid mistakes. And these time your quarterback can run down the field and get you a first down that season. Chad Owens will look to make the play from his end goal. Out to the 10. Side. And he follows the football. Let's see. They're going to say he was out of bounds when he fumbled the football. 13-point lead by Tulane. 
8.40 to play in the fourth quarter. Look, we talked to Coach Selfo and Tulane. They had a lot of things going against them. It's a road game. We're in the dark jersey on the wrong side. They're in the sun. We talked about the heat. We're going to come out claim the field. What's well, the gimmicky stuff? It's almost giving you the impression maybe you didn't think we had a chance. But we got an onside kick to start the game. And here they are, almost dominant. Right? A good coaching job. And I think it started with the fact that he impressive on his kids after a couple days here. you got to get your legs back. We need to make sure that you guys understand what we're up against. And he persuaded them of that, and then he showed them that by coming out doing those things, by saying, we're going to claim the field, and then two, we're going to do the onside kick. He told them beforehand they would do those things. I think it's been a working coaching job. And I would agree. And I, I would think June Jones would say the very same thing. Here's Woody Allen. He's a player right here. The Korea cut back inside and still away from the top of the cross midfield. And it drops at the 45. It's a 29-yard game. He says there, there's not any running out of the running shoot. You got somebody who's really competing here to get his team right back in it. Willie Allen, touchdown pass earlier, and now his leg. Getting into the flow of the game. Steve, remember we talked earlier about the game being so fast? Well, the more you play it, it slows down. The game is starting to slow down for him. He's starting to feel comfortable. The game slows down where the Allen gets faster. And a first down across midfield. Down by 13. With the Allen. Steps up, nearly coughed up the football. That's just a good play by Withy Allen not to fumble it. Floyd Dorsey has had a lot of good pressure for Tulane. Got to him again. Well, they've been able to bring pressure. Their linebackers have really played pretty well for Tulane, especially when they needed to, when they had to make plays. Done a good job out of them. I've really been impressed with the freshman, Anthony Cannon. That is the sixth sack, Rod. Imagine Hawaii's giving up six sacks. In a single game. That's hard to believe. They had a dominant offensive line. It's the exact same offensive line until the final two games of the season. And they came with a suspension to their starting left tackle, Wayne Hunter. Already without their starting center. Dustin Colbert on the receiving end there. The clock continues to wind. And we talked about the linebackers for Tulane playing well. Well, part of the reason is this guy over here. That's, that's Garrett Sachery. The outside linebacker coach. He's got his guys here doing a great job, and he's operating under some duress. His wife, Lauren, did not make the trip out here because she's pregnant, expecting their second child due on the 28th or any time now. That's quite a deep around. Here's Willie Allen. And he gets hit. Showing some good foot speed before he's finally taken down by Sean Lucas, who was just a little quicker. John Lucas, again, another freshman who's playing well. Remember we talked about next year, this Tulane team, how good it could be? Well, folks in Conference USA, including South Florida, when they come into the conference next year, will have to deal with an experienced team that is also explosive. You know, you, said, you made a great point to Coach Delfo. He said, hey, is this the last game of this season or the first game of next season? He agreed with first game of next season. Well, he's got a lot of young guys, and he's got a quarterback who's going to have a year in his belt. They're gaining some experience that you couldn't get otherwise. The extra practices and a big-time opponent for them in front of the national television audience. Fourth down and 12 now. Willie Allen has good protection. The ball across the middle of the two complete. It's Cochran, it's the first down, and that'll stop the clock. Game of 16. And he's starting to get comfortable. You can see it. You can just see it in the way he walks around on the field now. He's starting to act like, all right, it's my team now. I'm not here for Daniel Chang. I'm here to do it myself. And this guy helps him out quite a bit. Jemiah Cochran runs a nice route. And this is a good catch. He has to reach back. That's a nice shot. This is the third meeting all time between these two schools. In the 89, Hawaii beat them 31-26. In 93, beat them 56-17. Right, those games are going to bowl game. Willie Allen, strong off the water. It was not the way. There's a flag on the play. Anthony Cannon knocked it down with his hand, but looking behind him, there might have been some contact. There, there. Yeah, there should not be a flag on this one because Anthony Cannon got his hands on the ball. So once that happens, there should not be passing interference for contact. There's no penalty on the play. The ball is tipped. Therefore, by rule, there's no interference. 
pick that hanky up and put it in your pocket. Yeah. He's only 17 years old, but he knows how to play coverage. You'll see him right there in the middle. That's Anthony Cannon. Now the circle, kind of a little curly cute. He's right there. Look at it. Gets his hands on it. That's why you don't have pass interference. Once that ball is touched, receivers are fair game. So we talked about, you know, claiming the field, putting the names back on the uniforms. And you know what? Whatever he's done, if any one of those things worked, then, then it was worth it, Rob. This guy's only 39 years old. Already four years here. Yep. In case you missed it earlier, they announced a contract extension for Coach Cell Phone. Let's say two ladies got themselves a pretty good bargain. They they uh, they made that contract extension prior to this game. Prior to knowing just how good a coaching job he would do. And he tagged with the Hawaii ball. Dusty forward again, another grab for him. With Sanchez on the side. Well, somebody's doing a good job coaching up those defensive backs. Those corners are attacking and getting the ball out even after they're beaten. And that time, Jeff Sanchez, nice play. Coming across the left hand, batting it out there. So we'll give the credit to the defensive coordinator for Tulane. Eric Schumann was in his first season. Spent the previous five years working on the defense of SMU. They gave up more than 40 points a game last year. Not so this year. Down 21. Down 21 points. Lily Allen for far, 17 of 28. 208 yards of passing. And looking for another one. Carson Rob, Dustin Carver, making people miss. Speed. He's got another gear. Here he is, right there. Watch him once he gets his hands on his ball. He doesn't hesitate. He threatens you with his speed. He forces you to try to make plays based on his speed. Colbert, nine catches, 158 yards, and two touchdowns. Well, if you're going to throw touchdown passes, you better be a tough guy. You got to stand in there and take it like Floyd Dorsey just to win that play. Justin Ayat is on to the extra board. Got it. It's a six-point game with 5-12 to play. We've had long time consuming drives. That's a 74-yard drive. And Colbert knows how to finish it off. Stevie Rod Gilmore, Alex Flanagan, and our outstanding ESPN college football crew. Wishing you all of you and all of yours a happy holiday for everyone. Sports Center is coming up immediately following this outstanding College football bowl game. The first ever Canagra Foods Hawaii Bowl. More is the ball carrier. The clock will tick away. He said Tino E. Samoa made the stop along with Chris Brown. Uh, Tulane is thinking four minute offense here. You want to move the ball enough, try and pick up first downs, try and get another score, keep them off the field. They get one more score, they'll be all right. But they've got issues now. When they come back, it'll be a third down. We welcome you back, and we do so for third down and six. For Tulane at the 34-yard line. Up by six. Lost it off the play action. Chased by Tito E. Samoa. Throwing downfield, and it is caught. No! We'll say he didn't hang on. Christian Smith was there. And the frustration from Lawson. Uh, yeah, he thought he had a play there. Leonard Peters, once again, the freshman, showing up to make the play. And when La when Lawson first put this ball up, I thought maybe he shouldn't throw it because there were two guys there. But Smith got his hands on it, had a chance to make the play. David Gilmore, Leonard Peters in the area. But the ball should have been caught. David Gilmore. No relation. Goes by the nickname Happy, which I tried to stick on you a long time ago. You didn't want to be part of it. My nickname's just a nickname. Seth Marler is back. He's back in punt formation. He was out for the place kick. And here with the land one inside the 20. It will bounce. And let's see. Duane Gavin. And they down it at the one. They do. Great special team play by Tulane. Marlon put it exactly where he had to be. Joey Dawson 
was the player who downed it at the one-yard line. It's a 33-yard punt, Roger. Who cares about the 33? It's the best punt of his career. It's being sound in the kicking game and a good decision to do that. Now you put an inexperienced quarterback as far away from the opposing goal line as you can right now. He's on about his one-yard line, two-yard line, and he needs a touchdown with three minutes and 17 seconds to go. And Hawaii can only stop the clock once with one timeout left. Doesn't seem that long ago, Rod, we were looking for Jason Wheel, and he was warming up. Living Allen was struggling early on, but he clearly got on a got on a roll, got some flow going, some momentum. Maybe that was good coaching by June Jones. Took the message, hey, if you're not going to get it done, I'm going to go to the other guy. And Living Allen came alive after seeing somebody else warm up on the side. Willie Allen out of the shotgun, which puts him halfway into the end zone. Down by six. Field goal won't help him at all. And that pass behind Cochran skipped along the turf. We got the second down. Dangerous throw. Remember, we talked earlier about Tulane showing a two deep coverage, that two shell all the time, and then playing things out of it. Well, they showed the two deep coverage again. And hey, he was sitting right there and had a chance to pick off that ball. Oh, see the timeout is remaining. Oh, Second down and ten for the one yard line. Marlon really pinned them back. Oh, Ready now with the time across the middle throwing and nearly intercepted. Should have been John Lucas's second interception of the game. Well, they were playing a man under coverage. Sean Lucas, it's a trail technique. You let the receiver beat you, you trail behind him. The problem is, when the ball comes, you have to get your head around quickly, and it's hard to see the ball and catch it that quickly. This is what you're looking at. He's going to see his man over the middle. Trail technique, coverage. There's Sean Lucas stepping in front. Getting his head around the last minute, wasn't expecting the ball. Rod, Tulane is playing with fire here, giving Hawaii another opportunity, right? Had a drop touchdown pass, and they had the football. That's a drop on the interception. Yep. Third down and 10, giving him another crack at it. Willie Allen. Under pressure, he's going to go down. Loose football. Did it go out of the end zone? It's a safety. The indication is for the safety, Roxy Sheldon made the play. Eighth sack of the game by the green wave of Tulane. Well, timing is so important, and we talked about that in this office. We talked about also the experience. With the Allen, not in this situation a lot. Got to get rid of the ball. Not much of an opportunity. Roxy Sheldon blows past on the inside, makes it tough on him. You heard June Jones say at halftime that the release from With the Allen is not as quick as Timmy Chang, and he has to call shorter route. That was not a shorter route. Who nearly released his folder there. They, the names of the two lane players so badly wanted on their uniforms for this game. And the coach Selfo agreed to them. They're almost coming off. Put on a Scotch tape rod or what? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a spinster. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it's an eight-point game. Can we put the two-point conversion conversation to rest for this game anyway? I, I, well, at least for this game, it worked out okay. Two for four. Late. Two for four gets you four points, right? My math is correct. Yes. Two times two is four. four. About four. Okay, okay. about four. <laughs> right. And if they had not done the two points, just kick the one. One plus one plus one. About four about again. Four again. Yeah. All right, so it's a watch. It's a watch. Where were you uh, in elementary school? I needed some help with... Uh, I didn't have a cell phone back there, else I'm sure you would have called me. <laughs> Today's announce announcement quarter picked up by Ron Kimmel. Oh, my announcer's oh, oh, Sack to the second half and produced three fumbles. Tulane has put together a very, very complete ball game. In a game in which Ron really, coming into this one, it's just about everything was stacked against them in Hawaii's turn. You take a nine and a half hour flight from New Orleans over here. You come in, you find out that, oh, it's a lot hotter and a lot drier heat than you expected it to be. Your kids want to run around and play and surf and all that. you got a game you have to play. You're trying to tell them these guys are good. They're, they're having their dream vacation. 
and what you're also a big underdog to a team that can throw the ball over the place. The onside kick. And Tulane will recover that. Chino Fontanet, another good play out of him on the special teams. And there is a flag down. You see Tulane in the green uniforms there, but they also brought their white uniforms. Well, why make the equipment guy pack up two sets of uniforms? Because Coach Delfo's wife wanted them to. Be on the line to put a ball kick. Penalties refused. Tulane ball first and ten. Coach Delfo's wife wanted the team photographed in white uniforms on the beach. Listen to the coach's wife. Well, she's also going to get a pretty good Christmas present out of this because she said. Her husband had been so preoccupied and so busy with all this stuff, and they were going to stick around in Hawaii and have five more days just themselves with the kids, family vacation, get him away from the football scene, and that's what he's going to be doing after this ball You said preoccupied? That was a nice way of putting it. Loose football! Tulane had that one! They able to recover it back. It was recovered by Matt Trader, the redshirt freshman. Second thing I want to get to, I don't know that the onside kick was an automatic. And I think, obviously, June Jones does not believe they could kick the ball off, stop them, and get the ball back and score. But normally, you see a coach kick the ball off, ask the defense to hold them, give you some time back on the clock. The fact that he had only one timeout probably led June to believe, I got no chance other than try for an onside kick. 220 and counting. You know, New Orleans doesn't need an excuse to throw a party rod, but if they did, they'll make a step one here in the next couple of minutes. There's Lost to the deck. Should have gone out of bounds, tucked it inside instead, the clock will continue to run. Strange but true, and Hawaii has struggled really in the third quarter. The third quarter is the only quarter in which the Warriors didn't score at least 120 points during the regular season. In fact, only got 84. If you look at the third quarter, not only they're scoreless, but that Tulane big quarter in the game went deep to nothing. So what happened at halftime in the respective locker room? Well, we know that on the Hawaii side, they lost Timmy Chang. Right. On the Tulane side, there must have been some speech by Coach Selfro to his guys. Minute 51 to play. Here in Hawaii, the Warriors have spent their last time out, trailing by eight. Minute 53 left in the first Canagra Foods Hawaii ball rod they can only hope each and every year. The ball gets bigger and better, and they get similar kind of competition, similar kind of football game like the one we have had here tonight on Christmas night in Hawaii. Moeldi Moore, um, the ball carrier, Lance Samoseva. Made the stop. The great thing about Bowie, you, know, you get a game like this, and there's some more to come after this. That's why Bowie is one of those great weeks. And to me, it's very similar to when you get the March, you get the basketball, you get March like sure. Yeah, you get this one week where you get a bunch of great games going like this. Coming up on the final minute 20, Tulane came in. Not a single player has ever played in a full game of any kind. And they march into Hawaii, and they're looking to leave for the victory. More again. There is our Capital One player of the game, Lenaris Elpage. The punt returns the touchdown really dramatically changed the course of this game when it was a two-point game, when it was really close. When well, it was you know, being a father is one incredible motivating factor. He made big plays in the third quarter, said he wanted to make a big play on Christmas Day for his three-month-old son, named Junior, and he had a punt return for a touchdown, set up another one with a short field. Past season season, eight picks. Nice way to cap off the season for Final half minute to play. And that will do it. And there's the shower. And I'll tell you what, what, 75 degrees, Rod? That's not too bad, the shower. <laughs> and congratulations to Chris Selfo as he and June Jones share an embrace. The final score, Tulane comes to Hawaii against the odds. 
and shocks the Warriors. 36-28. to 28. That's our final score. Barack Gilmore and Alex Flanagan and our entire group, this is Steve Levy. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on ESPN.com. Sports Center is next. And with that, we say good night from Honolulu. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays.